In this video we will discuss an important factor for any sporting or performance dog and that is performance to weight and what do I refer to in performance to weight is what they can do for a certain weight class so for example per kilogram in a sporting dog for weight pull the ability to pull in the competition based on uh, yeah, speed, how fast can they run, or how hard can they accelerate. But also for a hunting dog, yeah, they are confined to their chest circumference, and how much performance can they bring on the ground for their diminutive size. And that's quite hard to address, but I started with the weight pool. If you have uh, an R, uh, into that type of sport, it's, it's quite easy because they have like a penalties for the weight classes. So if your dog is heavier, of course, they for example divide the performance of the dog, the weight that is being pulled by the, the weight of the dog itself. Because a heavier dog, of course, will have an easier time uh, pulling a heavy weight than a lighter dog does. Or in other words, they look at the relative weight pulled. And this is an old phenomenon. You might know this uh, from uh, boxing sports that they also have weight classes and the pit dogs also have weight classes, not only for combating each other, but also the red pit. They looked at the amount of rats being killed in a certain time frame, but divided it by the weight of the dog. So this is something about uh, performance that has been there for a long time and will be there for a long time. So if you look at uh, the force your dog is able to uh, transmit and that can be pure force by weight pulling, a good example, but you could also look at uh, how much uh, distance a dog can clear in a certain uh, amount of time, especially if there is resistance. So coming back to the topic, if there is resistance, so how can there be resistance? If you have a very uh, free running uh, sled mail or, or the likes it will favor dogs that are very fast like whippets it, because it is very free uh, spinning and therefore a lot, a lot of uh, power is not needed to get them moving but uh, longer legs and uh, great endurance is needed to keep them moving and make them move as fast as possible for longer times but the same whip it will not be pulling a lot of weight for their relatively relative size. But how can you still uh, compensate for that? If you have a slab mill or a carpet mill which already has a lot more resistance, sometimes they can add resistance by uh, the rollers and how much pressure is on them. Or they can, instead of making it flat, they can have it a little bit on the incline. On the incline, will then help to make it harder. Eh? Try to walk up the stairs is completely different than walking on a flat road, of course. But that also gives you different uh, type of muscles needed. So for the performance to weight, a sprinter, which is far more muscular, is of course uh, better to it than a long distance runner. That being said, you might be able to get one and a half uh, long distance runner for the same weight as one sprinter. So it depends a little bit on the task, of course, because three long distance runners might be quite capable at some task, even more so than two sprinters are. But in general, where there is explosive strength, of course, explosive musculature of the sprinter is different and it also depends on the test that you are facing if you go back to the old days <coughs> when they had canine combat of course the dogs that were able to close the distance very fast and win at a more explosive set of skills than those dogs that went in there took an enormous amount of punishment and after the other dog was gassed out, they would win. 
so that would be, make them different uh, in cardiovascular system but also different in musculature and acidification of the muscles for, for instance and also perhaps a lot more uh, intelligent to reduce the damage instead of going head on all the time so hope this uh, video helps have a great day